Good afternoon, my people, and thank you for coming back to another Tony Montana video. Hope you're doing well. Please say hello. Say hello to my. Oh shoot. Uh, I mean, it's gonna stop there, but. And this is she. She's already been. Ah, uh -uh. leave it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, mama. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Sorry about that. I was going to stop and say, please say hello to my little friend here. Uh, this is uh, Mary Jane, his daughter, to uh, daughter of uh, Holy Berry. Where he's hanging out. She's in need. She has a lot of energy to burn. So we're here. We walked here for about an hour and a half. Now we're walking around. And we're going back home. Hopefully that will help her calm, stay calm or be calmer in, indoors. Because she was uh, walking up walls. Uh, we're gonna have a little problem here with the door that's coming our way. I'm gonna have to make it turn to the right. And it seems like it's, uh, hopefully the person can handle it. But my dog hasn't seen it yet. Because remember dogs are nose, ears, eyes. So. Now she's seen the dog, the old dog. How you doing? Come on, come on. But the dog didn't, didn't pay attention to look like a female. Come on, mama, let's go, leave it. Let's go, mama, let's go. Come on. Huh? Thank you, thank you. Let's go, mama. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, mama. Come on, mama. Anyway, sorry about that. It took like wasted two minutes trying to deal with it, but I'm, everybody has a, a right to walk their dogs. And me having a, a dog aggressive dog, have, I have uh, more responsibility than them. But they, their dogs are probably human and animal friendly. Mine are only human friendly. Definitely not animal friendly, but uh, I do have like the mother, the dam for this one. She's uh, older, so I guess she, through the years, she's learned that uh, I just need to keep moving. Yeah, she just need to keep moving. So this one and the other one, hopefully, through time, they're young. Y'all know that this is this is not acceptable when we're walking around. And, you know, it's not acceptable to act a fool. But anyway, the intention of this video is really to talk, to respond to a, 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 the, the person that write, wrote a comment about uh, regarding my video of do we need dog fighters to maintain the standard, or maintain the breed? And I said no, and I gave my explanation. If, you're, uh, if you haven't watched that video. I made, uh, published that video yesterday. So in, in that video I said, no, you don't need dog fighters to, to maintain the breed. And I made it uh, explain why. Now there was a person that asked, the person is from Cape Verde. That's an item nearby uh, Africa. So uh, I guess to, I would say west of Africa. One of the West African islands. That's Cape Verde. They, they are Africans, but they speak Portuguese or a dialect of Portuguese. But anyway, the guy asked me, "Wait, the way you I understand the way you're telling me, oh, that's another little dog. But hopefully, the little dog isn't going to do anything. So I'm gonna try to keep on talking. And while this little girl starts barking, it's a little tiny little dog. I don't like that. I don't like her." acting a fool with little dogs. But anyway, the act is like, oh, wait, but the way you're, the way you're uh, talking, that only through game test and uh, to see who's, to bring only game dog to game dog, that's an incomplete dog. It won't have ability, it won't have bright, it won't have, you know, what was it? I guess endurance? Uh, I don't know what else, I can't remember what else he said, but, uh, and, and I would say, you're partially right, I guess. You know, but there are things like uh, knowing, 
you know, gauging the, the strength of a dog's mouth does not require that dog to be in a, in a pit or be fought. At the same time, you can also uh, see that particular attribute in the game test. Obviously, you won't see that at, at its best because it's dire if, if you doing a game test like I mentioned yesterday in my previous video, the game test will be the dog having a high level of fatigue already from the start. So if the dog isn't, doesn't know or that hasn't learned to breathe through its nose and it's uh, mostly a dog that breathes through it in open mouth, then that will obviously count in terms of that. So, and now that I think about it, you know, the, if, if, if oh, give me a second here. Okay. There's people around. Anyway, now, if you're looking at it, you know, in a dog, in a match rather, and this is in the 1900s, we're not talking about now. Remember, this is all, we're, we're talking, thinking as if we were in the 1900s, not in modern society. Because uh, obviously things happen in the 1900s, not happening for the most part here in, in, in today's age in today's culture so we're talking about everything that's been uh, referenced to 1900s not now so um, you know as I was I was saying a uh, dog that you know that, that is tired their mouth is not going to be as strong or hard or they are not going to be able to use it as, as efficiently when they're tired then when they're fresh. And obviously if, if you bring the dog fresh and uh, it could fit in quick because of the mouth. And then there are a lot of things you won't know, like ability, endurance, gameness. That won't be checked. You won't be tested. But in the game test, we're putting away for the most part. Uh, a dog's hard mouth, if they do have a hard mouth, they're going to still have a hard mouth, but it's not going to be as evident unless they have, like, they could breathe underwater, and that's a different story. But for the most part, in general terms, they're not going to be able to, to show their 100% ability because they're drained and tired, and that's not the point of the, the test. So, but... Uh, Guys, like, wow, you, if you are breeding incomplete dogs, yeah, you have dogs that are being bred because they're game dogs, uh, but they're going to, you're not, you don't know the rest of it, so they're incomplete. And I say yes, yes and no. There are things that you can, you can check without dog fighting, like the, a dog's mouth. You can do different type of activities, give them different type of toys or food that, and you can see how quickly or how long it takes them to, to destroy things like that. Uh, there's all those activities using the mouth to see how strong that dog's mouth is. Now, endurance, you can do the same, all the different activities to check to see if the dog, you know, has endurance, has agility, you know, not ability, but has agility, you know, and obviously the game test will see if, uh, if it's a quit, the dog is a quitter or not. Because again, you're putting all the cards against your dog to, to see indoors if the dog is worth breathing or not. You know, dog could be boys matching, but because we're not doing matching, we're doing just breathing without matching. So the whole conversation, and this is very essential. But then it's like, oh well, still you don't see you don't see the hundred percent of what the, what you're breathing. True, but we're we're. Um, Making sure that the most important aspect of trait, gainness, is in our dogs. So, four, five, six, eight, six generations of doing it the same way, just identifying the game dog and breeding those dogs, you know, without maybe ever having any any of them put in a match, you know, improves your percentages that the dogs that those dogs also be game dogs or or have a lot longer 
require a lot longer to quit, maybe two, three hours instead of 15 minutes. So, you know, did you, you could do that. So, um, what was, oh yeah. And so they say, okay, so you have to read, read to something else outside your program to get what's missing. First, I'm like, you do that with all animals. Well, if, even if it depends, it doesn't matter what the program, breeding program they have, they are going to, a lot of times, look for dogs that are not, that are not, uh, you know, in the program to fill the, the, the deficiencies that your dog has. I'm just waiting to felt like it was following me or something. So I'm like slowing down. I moved away. Because, uh, you know, people might take this as, like I'm promoting something which I'm not. I'm talking about history here. But anyway. So it's like, oh, if you want to breathe out, uh, bring something in to, to improve it. First, that's what happens all the time. But in any way you, you breathe a uh, uh, fighting dog, you still grab, look for all the dogs that have uh, attributes or tra traits that are great that your dogs are bad or not so great. So that's not any different than anything. But at least, when, let's say I'm the breeder in the 1930s, 1920s, you know, you're, you're getting deep game dogs or game dogs seven, six, seven generations of just breeding for that, not for that, but meaning for that, because remember, there's other ways of looking at other things, so uh, you're also looking at considering that those type of things, those other traits, like mouth, uh, endurance, speed, you know, agility, you can could, you could check it, all that without the pit, so if you grab those, and I'm gonna stop right here and point out. This is similar to what what the Irish people did in you know their old country with the dogs that we ended up calling here once they were here. Or once we started talking about them once here in the 1900s uh, as old family dogs, then we called them old family red nose red dogs, rather old family red dogs. They're old family red nose dogs. You know, so the terms evolved by the dogs, the main dogs that they reference for dogs from the old, old country, Ireland, that these individuals brought their uh, family of dogs from the old country. Uh, and from what I understand, these uh, families, Irish families, did not breed out. They breed, bred within the family. So these dogs uh, were extremely, extremely inbred, but they were so inbred, uh, but in, in the people, even though they were not, uh, uh, did not understand genetics at all back then, they bred uh, from those inbred dogs, the dogs that had good qualities, no malformations, no no other issues because of inbreeding. They basically removed, they called the dogs that were genetic, mental, physical uh, deformities and continued to inbreed the ones that did not show that and to eventually get, do away with uh, issues relating to those genetic defects because they removed, you know, those individuals that showed physically you know outward issues so you know the same thing that's why the same thing with the uh, uh, red boy dogs which I, I really believe that red boy dogs which obviously physically they look like the old family red nose of yesterday these individuals they uh, they genetically they, they are responding to genetics from those dogs in, in Ireland that they, they push up and they become dominant. They become dominant because of that, you know, all that work that the Irish people did in the country of inbreeding. 
so they, that blood became very strong and that is the reason why you know red boys dogs can be inbred and do not lose those traits and again i believe it's because they are they reflect the genetics of the old family red nose dogs of, of Ireland, the Irish dogs, not the ones here. All right, so I'm trying to get away from people. But so, what's the solution here? Well, the solution here is not seeking dogs from outside your program. Obviously, your program should have been wide enough that you, you have uh, enough genetic uh, variety that you can continue to breed and may potentially have a sublines, you know, divide them in sublines and then eventually use the sublines to cross each other. You get me? And by not using, not using all the dogs outside. And then picking, if for example, I was the breeder in 1930s, 1920s, and a couple of people bought dogs from me from different, from different from different sublines that I've created, obviously all with the same thought that you know, we, you know, gameness is first, first and foremost. Then they buy them, then they breed them. Again, it's 1900 here. They breed them. And they uh, and they look at the uh, at the pups, at the dogs that come out of them, what they produce, and choose now because you may not have uh, the same philosophy as me or the me of 1930s. You know, that, oh no, no, I'll, I'm gonna test them. I'm gonna put them in my bed. And you know, then I'm gonna breed them. You could do that. But, uh, but then the work is, most of the work is already done. But the bad point is the dog, uh, you're, you're going to get dogs that are, can go into deep water. All you're looking for is to pick the best dogs out of those that you bred uh, so you could pick uh, for mouth for ability all the little things that again it won't be so hard to reproduce because again the older dogs have it is just uh, suppressed to a point and the game is it's right up front okay hopefully that uh, uh, oh, explains some of it here for you for the people that were wondering and you just didn't want to say something or but that's the idea that you're you know you don't need it you don't need somebody to fight dogs to get the uh, good dogs now again if you want like the whole thing with the building and all that then it, that's a different story but our breed is known and our breed is recognized be, uh, among all all the other fighting breeds as a breed that has gainers. So that is the identifying trait that makes an American people terrier an American people terrier. Not the fighting, not the looks, but the gainers. All right, so this is Tony Montana. Let's see if we can do it here. Mama, please say hello and goodbye to my little friend. Oh, I can do it like this. Show mama. All right, until next time.